Hi, I'm Nikos. Hi, I'm Konstantinos, and uh, today we're going to talk to you about PASS, um, a data parallel system for the shell. Shell scripts are everywhere because the shell is everywhere. It is the default system interface, even in environments that do not contain other programming languages. It's a universal composition environment that allows the composition of programs that are written in any programming language. This allows really succinct program composition for data processing or system administration. To explain the basics of Unix pipelines, we'll show you a classic example. Given an input document, how to compute the top n, where n could be five, words and their counts. In Unix, you can express the solution to this problem using a single line Unix pipeline. The first stage, TR, converts any non-alphanumeric character to a new line character. The next stage converts everything into a lowercase character. The stage after that sorts words in the stream so that identical words end up being next to each other. The next stage eliminates any duplicates and counts the repetition. The last at one stage sorts all these counts in reverse numerical order. And the last stage outputs only the number of lines necessary. In our case, five. This works great if we have one input file, but how would it work if we had hundreds of files? It would take a long time to process the input. Why is automated shell script parallelization so difficult? First, even if we look at an individual command, it may be written in any of many programming languages, so it's not amenable to a single analysis. In several cases, a completely opaque black box. On top of that, the shell language primitives provide additional constraints that have to be taken into account. And finally, there is some runtime support necessary for hooking things together, making sure the results are correct, accelerating the computation and other issues. We have developed a system called PASH that solves these challenges and offers mostly automated parallelization of Unix shell scripts. Suppose you have a shell script like the one on the left. The first thing that PASH does is parse the script to create an abstract syntax tree. And then it attempts to compile this abstract syntax tree into a data flow intermediate representation. It then applies several transformations iteratively, depending on key information about these commands. Next, it generates the parallel script that is ready for execution. Today, we will discuss three components in detail. The first is the annotation language that provides key properties about the parallelizability of individual commands. Second, the data flow model and associated transformations. And third, selective components from the runtime library. Let's start with the annotations. We conducted an extensive parallelizability study across individual Unix commands and designed an annotation language for extensibility purposes. Now, the average Linux path contains thousands of commands, so we wouldn't be able to study and characterize all of them. Instead, we opted for two smaller, but representative and widely used sets of commands. The first is the POSIX set. The second is the GMU core utility library. Studying the commands in these sets, we devised four broad parallelizability classes. Rather than describing a command's full observable behavior, these classes focus on key information that's important for data parallelism. There are lots of interesting details here, like the interaction between flags and the order of input consumption that you will have to read in the paper. This study led to the design of a small domain-specific language for annotating commands. This language essentially defines a bidirectional correspondence framework between commands and nodes in the data flow model. They effectively instruct PASH on how to translate a command instance to a data flow node, but also back from the parallel data flow graph to the parallel shell script. In turn, we use this parallelizability DSL to annotate commands in POSIX, GNU Core Util, as well as commands found in the wild. So let's now move to the second contribution of our work, which is the data flow model and the corresponding transformations. So, as we mentioned in the challenges, the shell language enforces dependencies and scheduling constraints that, we, that, the, that the parallelizing compiler needs to be aware of. So, in this case, the first cut needs to execute before the second cut due to this semicolon here. Therefore, passes compiler frontend first identifies all regions of the code that do not have any scheduling constraints and transforms each one of them into a data flow graph. For example, in this case, we have two data flow graphs, and let's look at the first one. As you can see, there's cut uh, a processing node of the flow graph that reads from two inputs, f1 and f2, and then writes to, to out.txt. Um, the semantics of the graph is of the flow graphs in our model is that they have no scheduling constraints. So all nodes of them in them execute concurrently, uh, communicating with channels that behave exactly as uh, Unix FIFOs. And uh, each data flow graph uh, takes as, uh, as input a set of input files and writes to a set of output files, uh, possibly including its standard input and standard output. 
Um, the important thing to note is that uh, each data flow graph does not do any other side effects on the environment. Um, here, similarly, the second data flow graph would be would be this: the cut reads from out and then writes to its standard output. So let's now focus on um, a slightly more complex um, uh, pipeline that is only one data flow graph, so that we can look at the transformations that Apache um, uh, performs. Uh, and note that all of the transformations that Apache performs are semantics preserving. So the given the semantics of the input files and the uh, output files, Apache will perform transformations that will ensure that the output, um, so the output files of the, the transformed data flow graph will be exactly the same um, as the original ones. So let's look at the first. So, so this is this is our pipeline here. So as you can see, there's cut that reads from F1 and F2, writes to TR, writes to sort, which then writes to out.txt. And um, let's look at the first transformation that we could do. So first, uh, we could actually parallelize TR by splitting its input um, and then merging its output using a cut. And this we can actually do because TR is stateless. Um, uh, from our, uh, which is something to know from the correspondence framework. So after that, uh, we can apply a second transformation that removes a cut followed by a split that has, um, where the cut has the same number of inputs as the split has outputs. So in this case, uh, by removing those two, we get that F1, the first TR reads directly from F1 and the second TR reads directly from F2, getting rid of this unnecessary merging and splitting. In our paper, we uh, we have um, the transformations that uh, we showed here, and and we give a lot more details about them. So, um, if you want if you want more details, uh, you can read the full paper. Let's switch to Pasha's runtime system. Pasha's runtime support solves several challenges, a few of which I'm going to outline below. These challenges are related to performance and correctness characteristics of the parallel scripts. Details about these and other problems are in the paper. Consider the parallel grep program on the left as a result of Pasha's compilation process. The problem with this program is that cat will first read from the first input screen up to completion, and then will start reading from the second screen. That means that the second grep will block until the first grep completes. A possible but inadequate solution would be to use intermediary files. This solution would allow the two grep commands to proceed in a data parallel fashion at the cost of pipeline parallelism. Pasha's runtime support solves this problem by offering a buffering primitive that pulls incoming streams eagerly, thus allowing upstream commands to execute in parallel. Eager is a normal Unix command available outside of the Pash context and is designed in a way that fits into the data flow model. Great, so let's now look at the demo, let's figure out how does it look like running Pash on a real cell script. So to start, we'll show the cell script that we showed in the beginning of the presentation. This cell script has uh, the pipeline uh, that finds the top 100 words in, the, in a piece of text. And before that, it exports this input variable pointing at this input file. Note that this export has to be run before the script itself for, um, for this to work. So let's first set this um, input to be 100 megabytes. And um, Let's run the script with bash and see what is the output that we get. One eternity later. Great. It took 43 seconds. So let's try running the same thing with bash. Where with pass and width two, where we keep the output of pass on this separate file. Amazing. It took 29 seconds. So let's now run this. Let's first of all look at whether the outputs of these two are the same, and they are actually the same. So let's now look a little bit at our evaluation. We will show a case study, um, some information from a case study that is a long weather analysis script. Um, that was taken from the Hadoop book. So this script actually contains several stages of data fetching, data preprocessing, cleanup, and filtering, and finally, the calculating. And uh, Hadoop, the Hadoop book only focuses on this part, which is actually about 100 lines of Java code and only four stages in the shell script pipeline. 
So we actually re-implemented this calculation as a shell script. And then we run this whole script um, using bash. And bash, as you can see, the first part, which is only pre-processing, takes 33 minutes and 58 seconds for um, five years of weather analysis data. And the second part takes 10 minutes and four seconds. This is for 82 gigabytes of data that are four years of um, weather data. And if we execute the same thing with patch, with patch we can see that it speeds up the first part by almost two times uh, for the pre-processing. And then the calculation part, it speeds up by 12 times. And uh, the combined speed up is about 252. But the important thing to note is that traditional parallelization frameworks do not focus at all on this first part. And this actually, in this case, has the biggest impact for um, execution time. Um, in our paper, we actually have more evaluation that you can go check out if you want to. So to conclude, PASS proposes a parallelizing compiler that takes a shell script and returns a parallel shell script that can be executed on top of the user standard shell. It also addresses extensibility issues by proposing a correspondence framework that is based on the study of many commands, including the full set of POSIX and GNU core utils. PASS is open sourced and can be found in the link here. I finally want to close with the fact that there is a lot of recent research on the shell, enabling fresh perspectives on old problems. Let's rehabilitate the shell together. Thank you. <laughs>